today for homework, we are going to add pleats to a garment. I don't care what garment you add them to, and actually I am going to start with a sloper. Um, so I have added a quarter scale sloper to the blackboard, and we are going to place and trace around that and make that into a full scale sloper to work with um, in order to learn how to add these pleats in Illustrator. Adding pleats is something that um, is difficult in in real life, um, in paper patterns, I think. I've added a reference um, for you on um, someone adding pleats using paper patterns, which I thought was really helpful today um, when I was reviewing for this. And I am going to place the um, quarter scale sloper PDF. If I just hit place and I don't choose, Im choose show import options here when I'm placing a PDF into Illustrator, it will only place the first page. So when I choose place, I have to check off show import options. I've got to choose it. And then I can choose to place the second page. So here are both the pages and um, you can see that they all fit on the eight and a half by 11 page. So I am going to trace around these just like we did last week. And um, then I will scale them up with you. So uh, I traced around these and I um, have grouped them together and we are going to scale them up so they will be full size slopers uh, and then I'll probably save this file as a sloper file. Uh, so I think we can do it all at once. I'll just select all of them and go to object transform scale and since they are quarter scale that means they need to be four times bigger um, so we need to scale them up 400 percent so that would be quite a lot there we go uh, and we will hit okay so that's looking good let's turn on some rulers yeah and these are, are looking like they are scaled appropriately now so I'm pretty sure this should be a size 10 pattern now um, so I am going to save this as um, its own reference file. So now I am going to add pleats to one of the shirts, um, but first I'm going to adapt these into more of a a shirt pattern. Um, so I am going to save as so I don't save over the sloper I just made and we're going to call this shirt. Um, so let's, let's line up the bodice front and the bodice back waist. And I am going to um, remove the, the yoke on this side. Um, so in order to keep the shape a whole shape, right, um, we are going to select it and then use um, the pen tool or the delete anchor point tool to subtract those anchor points we don't need. It's easy, it works best if it's selected and then you can subtract anchor points fine. Um, so we are going to move all of these anchor points down the same amount. Um, and if we need to, we can measure and check to make sure that the bodice back and the bodice front um, will still align correctly afterwards. Um, so 
I want to move these down to about the hip line. So I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to lock these. And then with the white selection tool, I can select all of the anchor points down there. Let's bring these to the front. Um, bring the groups to the front. And then white selection tool, select those anchor points. Um, and now I'm going to hold shift and bring them down. And I'm just going to manually drag and adjust these. Um, so let's measure from here to here using the line tool. 15.83 inches and I'm going to hit control Z so we don't have an extra line there accidentally. And then I'm going to measure these two lines and add them together. So I measured these two sides with the line tool and um, they came out to 0.21 longer than this side when I added them together. Um, so I know that this side needs to be 0.21 longer, so I can actually select this anchor point and move it that specific amount. Um, so we select it with the white selection tool, right click, transform, move, and we want it to move down because um, that's what's going to make it longer, and we want it to move down 0.21 inches. Um, and I'm going to hit OK, and then let's measure that line again. Oops. Measure the line segment tool. 16.03. Perfect. That is exactly what these added up to after I measured them. Um, so I'm just going to make sure I don't have any random. Yeah, I have an extra line there now randomly, and an extra line there. So we don't really want those. Um, they're just used for measuring. So um, the shirt is now nice and long. Um, maybe I want to make sure that all of the bottom anchor points on this side um, line up. Uh, I probably should have done that before I measured and stuff, but I can use the um, I selected them all and then I used the vertical align center and this is going to put them all on the same horizontal line which is what that little symbol is representing and I can do the same thing over here this we could maybe make that not have a curve anymore um, and we can select all of these and choose vertical align center um, all right, looking good. Let me make sure this doesn't have an anchor point anymore. Um, so we can now, um, now I'm going to create a yoke in the back um, and we are going to add our pleats to the top of the yoke. I'm going to um, unlock all and then actually remove the skirt from this pattern because we're only focusing on the shirt. The sleeve can stay um, and I can actually delete my quarter scale pages. So we learned how to divide uh, last class. I am going to draw a line where I want the yoke to be and it should start and end outside of the garment. Um, so I'm just going to draw a straight across one and start outside and end outside. And I'm holding shift actually even so that it is perfectly straight. Um, and then we can select both of them and we might have to, it might be good to ungroup right now and just select 
the line and the shirt and not the text. And then we're going to come to our Pathfinder tools and choose Divide. And remember, if you don't have Pathfinder, you can go to Window and Pathfinder, and then it'll pop up. And Divide is in the lower left-hand corner, and it splits groups on lines. Um, so any line that you have going through, as long as it has no fill and only the stroke, and you have the line selected and a solid shape with fill, it will divide appropriately. And then you just have to ungroup. We have a stacking issue here. Arrange center back so we can still see the bodice back. And we will copy that and call this the yolk. Um, and let's group them again, or we'll group this at least. Uh, so let's add um, let's add a pleat to the bodice back at this point. Um, I at this point would copy. I would make a backup version of um, the original garments um, and then we're going to start drawing on this one so let's just add a regular um, knife pleat at this point I'm going to move this off to the side and the first thing we want to do is draw where we want the pleats to be and um, we can just slide this up for a little bit. There we go. And just like when we added fullness in the last video, we are going to use Pathfinder Divide in order to split the garment at this point. Now, we could um, just move the garment to the side, and this would be this would add fullness all the way down the garment. Um, or if we want to keep the bottom of the shirt uh, the same width, we might choose to rotate this so if you want the top if you're choosing to rotate and you want the top of the pleats to be a specific fold under depth we should measure that distance ahead of time uh, so I'm going to grab the line segment tool and I'm just going to click once and we are going to make a line going completely out horizontally that, um, let's say we want a, um, a one inch total um, underhang. We are going to type in one inch and choose OK. Um, so there is the uh, that's going to be what we aim for, the end of the rotation. So we're going to grab this side now and use the Rotate tool. And with the Rotate tool, you click to define the center of rotation. And then um, I'm going to zoom in up here. You click for the first reference point. Am I crazy? Yes, and you um, you can click and drag for the next point. Yeah, so that's pretty close. So now we've added one inch um, of pleat up here, and that would be what gets uh, put. This gets tucked under inside in the knife pleat. Um, so we can delete this path now. We know we've added an inch up there. And we can 
start joining these shapes together again. Um, another option, if we want to include both of these lines in um, in the next in the pattern, in the final pattern, we could just draw a quick triangle here and fill it with the same um, shape. And we could we could join all these together, right? We've been using the shape builder tool to join them all together. Um, even though it didn't. But I guess my point, I'm not sure why it's not working, but my point was um, that we would lose all of the lines there. Um, we're just leaving this triangle in there and grouping everything. Um, will uh, will work well here in terms of now we, we've left the lines um, and these are going to be where the pleat comes together. Um, so um, we might actually add notches up here and we certainly want to add notches on the yoke where um, these will respectively come together. So let's add a quick notch on the yoke. I've, I've lined it back up with this point and we can add a quick notch there and we'll add that back into this group. Um, same thing on this one, um, especially if we had grouped them all together. I'm not sure why. I just nudge that over because maybe they weren't overlapping enough. Yeah. So we would also probably add notches at these anchor points in this one. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in. And there's an anchor point there. And there's also an anchor point here. Um, and we are going to join all of these together. Group. Let's make them closer to the same size. All right. So there is your knife pleat. Let's add a box pleat. Um, for, for the box pleat, I am actually going to mirror this piece and um, kind of open it up so we can add the box pleat directly in the center. So I'm going to use my reflect tool and for reflect to work you have to choose alt and click and it should, if we have vertical selected, if I've chosen the center front line, um, it will flip over that point exactly and we can hit copy. And now I'm going to join, join these together. And um, I'm actually going to add that center front line back in over the top. So now we're going to draw two lines um, to the left and the right of this. So if we want there to be a, um, a, a two inch wide box pleat, we need to draw lines that are exactly one inch on um, to either side of this. So I am going to grab my line segment tool and we are going to click and um, type in one inch at exactly zero degrees and hit OK. Then we're going to do the same thing going out in the other direction. 
1.80 degrees is going to the left, one inch, and there we go. And now I'm going to draw two lines going um, exactly down from there. I'll straighten, I'll stretch those out in a second. Okay, so um, with, with those lines set up, what we can do is we can split this bottom garment again. So I'm going to room or the, um, the bottom half of the bodice again. So I'm going to select everything except for this center front right line right now because I don't want that to accidentally split it and choose divide and my center front line disappeared because when you choose divide it automatically brings that shape, the new shape it's made, to the front. Um, I'm going to delete this notch for right now. And actually what we would do on the yoke is we would add a notch right here um, and the yoke would also probably be cut on the fold. Um, so let's add a little notch. So now we've split this into um, into three parts. I'm just going to ungroup them, and then um, for the box pleats, we of course could use rotate again. Um, but this time, I think I'm going to add a consistent amount of fabric all the way from the top to the bottom. Um, so I'm going to go to right click, transform, and move, and um, we are going to use move in order to move this a specific amount of inches to the left. So if we want there to be um, a, a full box pleat where the fabric comes all the way back to the center and like the fabric from each side meets at the center, which that isn't necessarily required, um, but if we wanted to to have that, we would need to add two inches of fabric to this garment. Um, so I am going to choose to move it horizontally two inches. And we are going to go do the same for this side, except we are going to choose negative two inches. And this, all this extra space is where our pleat would be. Uh, so I'm going to fill that extra space with some rectangles. And um, of course there's lots of options. We could unify this back together. We could leave these, um, these lines in the pattern, um, but it's probably best practice to um, draw the little pleats on, on both sides and then unify them back together. So I'm just going to make sure I don't select these pleats when I am going to unify, uh, so, or these, that I don't select these marks here notches. Okay. So now I've selected everything in the center. I don't select those notches I just drew. Um, and we choose, we don't choose Pathfinder Divide, we choose the Shape Builder tool and we draw through them. And there we have all of our notches for our box pleat. Um, So uh, what do we do if we need to add um, a lot of pleats to a garment and is there any easy way 
to do that. Uh, let's talk through that here. So we are going to add a series of knife pleats to this uh, front bodice. Um, and to do that, we are going to use something called the blend tool. Um, if you've used the blend tool before, you know um, that it creates a series of shapes that kind of um, intersects with uh, or like that are transitionary shapes between um, the two shapes that you click on. So if I have a big star and a tiny circle, um, and if the circle is bright yellow, and if I grab my blend tool, which is this guy, and I click on one shape and I click on the other, it blends between them. Um, and this is like a seamless color blend, but there are other options for the blend tool. So I'm gonna hit Control Z and double click on the blend tool. And instead of smooth color, um, I'm gonna choose specified steps. And if we know we want um, four shapes in between here that are transition shapes, we can hit OK. And then if I click on one and click on the other, I get those four transition shapes in the varying colors. Or we can choose specified distance. So if I know that I want a shape every five inches, um, we can hit OK and then click one and then click the other. And this has spaced them out every five inches. So I think specified distance is the one that we are going to use. Um, so I am going to add pleats. Um, I want to add a series of pretty small pleats to of pin pin tucks, I guess, to the front of this shirt. So I'm going to start by drawing a straight line that goes straight down. Um, and let's measure the distance between this and the front of the bodice. So there's two point three inches. Um, so I am going to, can we see that? All right, this, this line I drew doesn't have any fill on it. All right. So I'm going to um, object transform move this and we are going to move it um, over to the right two inches. So that's going to um, that's going to give us um, a round number to work with in terms of the space in between them and it should put it right on top of it. Um, I forgot to hit copy. Transform, move. Alright, so now we have two of them and with the blend tool, um, we can click on one and click on the other. Um, let's do it up here and actually I should have double clicked on this and told it we want one every 0 0.5, um, 0 0.5 inches. Let's try that. Let's see how many we get that way. There we go. So now we have three in between. Um, so that seems pretty good to me. It seems like a good amount of pin tucks, but we could have said we want one every 0.25 inches, um, which would have given us like even smaller pin tucks. Um, and this is where they will be visible on um, the front of like the pressed garment, right? Um, so I now am left with um, a kind of grouped shape. So I am going to go to Object Expand. And um, whenever you use some of these higher level functions, um, like brush strokes and stuff, um, you can go to Object Expand. And we just need to expand to the object. And now we have um, now we have a bunch of individual shapes. I just need to ungroup them. And now we can like 
choose these individual lines. Um, but what we're actually going to do, I bet you could have guessed it, is use Pathfinder Divide. So that's why I started and ended outside of the garment and I um, chose, uh, I, that's why we needed to ungroup them. Um, so Pathfinder Divide and then ungroup it and then we have all of these individual shapes. Um, so I'm going to select this whole chunk and this is when we need to decide how how um, how much under tuck, how much underlay there's going to be in our pleat, right? Um, so we are going to go to Object, Transform, Move, and if each um, if each if the distance between each pleat is 0.5, we don't want to do um, the maximum. Uh, size here we could do is one inch, um, but I actually think something more like a half inch of under tuck, just like a tiny little, tiny little tuck under there um, would be fine. So we're just going to add a half inch there. Um, and I hit copy. Let's add 0.75 so we can at least visually see a difference between those. And I accidentally hit copy last time. Um, I'm just going to hit OK this time. And now I'm going to select every one except for um, this first one that I've already moved. Transform, move, and it should automatically come up with the 0.75 as long as we haven't done anything in between them and we can hit OK. So there we have it and what we could do is um, I'm going to choose to draw behind um, or we could just arrange this later, um, but I'm going to come up to the top and join, or just, I'm just drawing a shape behind these shapes to, to fill in. And um, we definitely could add notches at the top and the bottom to represent these pleats after we join them together, um, which is more like what they would look like in pattern design. Um, but really, I think that this looks really nice and effective. Um, so I think, I think leaving the lines here and just making sure that this is grouped all together, um, it allows for probably more flexibility too, in terms of like, you could probably put this you could probably unfold um, these pleats under essentially and put this back together into its same shape if you needed to um, or into its original shape. So I would love it if you guys were creative with this assignment. If you used your um, your skirts and pleats um, or your, your bodices and and just, just combined them in unexpected ways, added pleats in um, unexpected spots in creative ways, um, even though it's just a homework assignment to kind of teach us about pleats. Uh, so please also watch that other video about paper pleats because I think she does a really good job of explaining all of the um, all of the different types of pleats and about underlay and everything like that. So uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, let me know how this goes.